Tenebrous armor is character specific. The armor is bank shareable. Tenebrous armor does not have a set effect. It comes with a special shadow effect. The armor can be sealed once. The armor has three lines of additional effects that can be rerolled with less time and space scrolls. The individual and enhance effects for a tenebrous armor are on the screen right now. The first two times you clear 17, 1 and 2 every day per character, you will get a tenebrous armor drop from the boss. When you get a drop, it can be for any character. The armor drops sealed. Tenebrous armor can be crafted through the NPC Betty in Magmelia Town using five tenebrous pieces. Tenebrous pieces can be obtained by dismantling tenebrous armor. You get one tenebrous piece when you dismantle tenebrous armor. Tenebrous armor can also be bought off the board from other players. Reforging tenebrous armor is exactly the same as reforging rigormore armor. There are 21 reforge levels. Every time you click the reforge button, you will need either Tasma Aura or Tenebris Aura, Magical Crystals, and Raw ED. Tenebris Aura is similar to Spectral Amethyst. Tenebris Aura can be obtained from the Turd Nog Shadow Aura quest. This is a daily quest that is per account. You get 200 Aura from this quest. Tasma Aura is similar to Glacium. It drops from Turd Nog Dungeons. You can also buy this item off the board from other players. When you click Reforge, there is a certain chance that the armor will go up a Reforge level. If it doesn't, your pity bar will fill up by a certain amount. When your pity bar reaches 100%, your next click will ensure you go up to the next Reforge level. Similar to Rigormore armor, Tenebrous armor has Reforge durability. Every piece starts at 100% durability. Every time you click Reforge, your armor will lose 1% durability. To restore durability, you need to use a Blessed Chlorite Seed. There are two types of Chlorite Seeds. The 5% Chlorite Seed will restore 5% Reforged Durability. It almost never drops from 13x and 17x dungeons. The Blessed Chlorite Seed 10% restores 10% Reforged Durability. It can only be obtained by spending 100 Caching to buy it from the item mall. You can also buy it off the board from other players or from a Caching seller. These are the Reforged effects for Tenebrous Armor. When you reach stage 6, 12, and 18, you can use ED, Magical Crystals, and either Tenebrous Aura or Tasma Aura to choose a skill you want. You can always change the skill. Go to Vasili in Magmelia Village to reforge transfer. Rigormore Armor needs to be reforged stage 18 or higher, and transferring can only be done with the same armor parts. Once transferred, reforge level decreases by 6 stages. Reforge Stage and Reforge Gauge of the Rigormore Armor used for the transfer is reset. Enhancement level of Rigamore armor used for the transfer does not reset or transfer. Reforged gauge of Tenebrous armor after the transfer is reset and the armor becomes unsealable. There are two types of reforge transfer. There's normal reforge transfer and special reforge transfer. The normal reforge transfer uses Tenebrous aura, Tasma aura, Magical crystals, and ED. The amount of materials used becomes higher with higher reforge stage. Special reforge transfer uses Reforge Stage Transfer Tickets, Magical Crystals, and ED. Reforge Stage Transfer Tickets can be bought from the item mall for 950k Ching. The amount of materials used becomes higher with higher Reforge Stage. And the amount of materials you need for each stage is on the screen right now. Shadow Effect can be identified by using a Shadow Effect Identification Scroll. Shadow Effect come with three lines of effects, 1 star, 2 star, and 3 star when identified. Each line has different effects. Shadow effects cannot be re-identified. Effects can be extracted, stored, and applied using the effect storage box. Shadow effect identification scrolls can be obtained as a 17x boss drop, can be crafted through Betty with 50 tenebrous auras, except this version is not tradable, and it can also be bought from the item mall for 160 caging. And now I will go over the recommended shadow effects for DPS. Disclaimer, these are the recommendations based on our current knowledge of the gear and effects and based on the current Elsword meta. These may change in the future. It is recommended that you aim for max values for the recommended stats. The stat and values don't matter as much for the two star bottom piece effects. For our list of all possible effects and values, please refer to the LWiki link linked in the description. So for your one star effect, you want the same thing for all your pieces. You want either all skill damage increase or you want critical or maximized chance increase. Critical and maximized chance increase is good because it frees up slots for you to socket boss damage. For your two star effect, for the top piece, you want to aim for deals additional continuous damage that is nth percent of damage upon attack for three seconds dungeon. 
This is functionally a delayed power amplification. You can also go for polarized damage dealt slash received increase plus nth percent max 45% dungeon. If you are having trouble reaching the polarized cap, this can be an option as well. For your bottom piece, you either want damage reduction increase plus nth percent, or you want buff party HP increase by nth percent per 500 KCP max 10% dungeon. These are the stats you'd want preferably, but because all the effects for the bottom piece are defensive, unless you are a mega whale, it's not worth rerolling generally. For your gloves, you want skill tier, skill damage increase plus nth percent. For your shoes, you can take skill MP cost decrease if you need it. You can also choose action speed increase if you need that. You can also choose to take all master skill cooldown decrease if your class uses their MC skill a lot. You can also take buff party movement speed increase by nth percent dungeon. This one can be nice to have if you farm a lot. And finally, if you don't want anything mentioned previously, you can take critical or maximize chance increase as it will free up slots for you to socket boss damage. And for the 3 star effect, for all your pieces, you want to try to aim for when attacking enemies with less than nth HP, damage is increased by nth percent. HP condition and damage increase increases when applying the same effects. Alternatively, for fillers, you can consider when the sum of all elemental resistance exceeds 1000, all skill damage is increased by nth percent, or transcendent skill slot damage increase effect is increased by nth percent, and the buff's duration is increased by n. Duration and damage increase increases when applying the same effects. Now I want to go over the shadow effects recommended for support. For the 1 star effect, for all your pieces, it doesn't really matter. You can aim for stats to increase your CP, but it's not that big of a deal. As for the 2 star effects, for your top piece, you want to aim for the buff party critical damage increase, buff party's physical attack power increase, or buff party magical attack power increase. For your bottom piece, you want to either go for buff party HP increase or buff party damage reduction increase. For your gloves, you want to go for buff party all skill damage increase. And for your shoes, you want to go for buff party action speed increase. And for your 3 star effects, for all your pieces, you want to aim for when using a master skill, recovers ally special resources. Through Magmelia Town's Vasily NPC, shadow effects can be extracted, then stored, or applied to Tenebris armor. Effect storage box has three slots, each for top, bottom, gloves, and shoes. They can be expanded up to a maximum of six slots. Each slot costs 2 mil ED. One shadow effect line from the three identified shadow effect lines can be extracted. Tenebrous armor with plus 9 or higher enhancement or reforge stage 12 or higher cannot be chosen for shadow effect extraction. Only the effect is extracted then stored. The effect's rates are not stored. The armor is deleted after the effect is extracted and cannot be restored. You can increase the chance of extracting an effect you want up to 50% and decrease the chance of extracting an effect you don't want down to 0%. So you can move this all the way up to 50, you can move this all the way down to 0. Depending on how you move the percents, the amount of material you need to extract can either increase or decrease. Thor shadow effects can be applied to tenebrous armor. Rates are applied as the effect is applied to the armor. The rate is RNG. The effect in the storage box is deleted. Apply can only be attempted on the same line as the effect that is stored. And finally, I want to go over the general flowchart for building Tenebrous Armor. This may change in the future. First, you want to continue working on your Rigormore Armor while working on Tenebrous Armor. Tenebrous Aura is heavily time-locked, and it's probably better to try to get as much reforging as you can get done on your Rigormore Armor. Tenebrous Armor is also heavily RNG, time-locked, and paywall-locked, so it takes a while to get something better than Rigormore Armor. Do your daily Tenebrous Aura quest in at least two runs of 17.1 and 17.2 each daily for your daily Tenebrous Armor. Armor pieces. When you get Tenebrous Armor pieces, you can either sell them or you can either buy a scroll, use one you got as a drop, or craft one with Tenebrous RS to identify the shouting effect for that piece. For the first top, bottom, gloves, and shoes piece you get for your character that has at least one effect with max value, keep it. This is the piece you will apply effects to. If you get any more pieces that have a good effect and max value, it's probably in your best interest to sell it. When you extract, there's no guarantee you extract the effect you want, and then when you apply, the value will be rerolled. For other pieces you get that have a good effect but does not have the max value, you can use your Tenebrous Aura and other materials to try to extract the effect. If you manage to extract the right effect, you can try applying it and seeing if you get the max value. If you identify an armor piece that has no good effects, you can either try selling it, though I'm not sure why someone would buy it, or dismantle it for tenebrous pieces. You also need to work on enhancing your tenebrous armor, 
After you manage to enhance their Tenebris armor and get the right effects and max values for your pieces, transfer your Rigamore armor's reforged level to the new armor. Finish reforging your Tenebris armor to R21. And finally, you can try rerolling the additional effects for at least one line of all skill damage. And that's it for this video. Thank you for watching and hope it was helpful.